Well, you've either seen them online or in person, and this weekend you may start hearing them. We are talking about the 17 year cicadas, and many of our viewers have been sending in pictures of what they're seeing in their own neighborhoods. And this week we even showed you a story about how to cook cicadas, and it turns out it's just not something that will just gross out your friends, but it could also be good for the environment and maybe even good for you. Joining us this morning, a sustainable food expert from Johns Hopkins University, Jessica Fonzo. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Great to see you. Great to see you too. So eating cicadas is good for the environment? Absolutely. Insects, uh, as well as plant proteins, have a lower environmental footprint. Um, when we think about our diets, we eat a lot of animal source foods, cows, pigs, sheep, chicken, and insects, along with plants, are lower on the environmental chain. They don't produce as much greenhouse gases. They don't cause deforestation. They actually love the forest. They're, for <laughs> they're part of the forest food hub and network. And uh, they don't use really any water, so so they are an environmental source. It's just getting over the ick factor that's the biggest hurdle. Which right, and that's I mean that's a big factor. And let's face it, the cicadas the, underground they have been feeding on the trees for the last 17 years, so that's what they're filled up with. But they are a huge source of protein. Huge source of protein. Now it's interesting because the nutritional profile of these three species that we see emerging. It doesn't really, it's not out there. But when we look at the range of insects, and there's been a lot of nutrition analysis done on insects consumed all over the world, which is quite common around the world. It is, insects. right? Mm -hmm. High in protein, high in vitamins and minerals. So really quite a healthy snack or potentially full on meal, depending on how you want to eat them. But let's face it, and speaking of how people are going to eat them, you're really not going to just pick one up and bite the head off. You're going to do something like deep fry it or cover it with chocolate. Is that sort of negating the nutritional value there? Yeah, it, it does, right? And, and of course, don't eat them live and raw, but you can saute them in olive oil and put them on top of a bed of rice with veggies. So you can make them healthy. But of course, a lot of populations, including Mexico, they eat grasshoppers. They call them chapulines. The best are when they're deep fried. <laughs> oh, man. OK, so I have to ask, have you have you eaten cicadas? I've had and I have some live right here. So and you promised me you weren't going to eat them live. I won't eat them live. <laughs> I would not. Oh, look so at her. Little, yeah. So this is a little nymph. Oops. She's a, so she's got kind of a full body. Mm -hmm. So these are the ones that are just coming up from the ground. And um, they don't have their wings. They don't have that hard exoskeleton. You know, those beautiful black cicadas we see with the orange wings. Those I do not recommend eating. These I've tried. And of course, I have fried them as well. And what do they taste like? They're really good, actually. They're quite subtle. What do they taste like, though? Are they like peanuts they're, or they're like chicken? They're nut, like nutty, buttery. Okay. You know, every once in a while, you'll, you'll crunch into one that it tastes a little bit like asparagus. Oh, kind of okay. Grassy. They're very right. mild. But Jessica, you are a treat. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me here. You are very welcome. Take care.